What's going on YouTube? This is CJ 64 here and well, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, welcome to another Wi-Fi battle for this channel. If you guys are enjoying the Wi-Fi battles and you're liking that everything that has been doing with, been done with this channel, go ahead and leave a like down below because as always, your support is always appreciated. So today we're versing um, our resident champion from Xenos. His name is Jake. Um, He's a really good battler. Um, I've watched a lot of his battles. He is a very, a very good battler. So if you want to go ahead and check him out on the Xenos Facebook group, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Links always down below for uh, the Facebook group for Xenos and my Twitter and my Facebook page, which is obviously just coming out. So uh, today we're going to go ahead, we're going to go and do this another new year battle. Now we've got the same team as last time. The only difference is I did put the Iron Head on the Entei. Now having a look at his team here, he does have the Glalie, which I'm assuming is the Mega, the Donathan, the Florges, the Porygon 2, the Entei and the Suicune. So a very bulky team indeed. I could say five or six of them are probably going to be the bulkiest Pokemon ever. So uh, with that said, just trying to think, he could start off with a um, a Dolphin to try and set up rocks. That's probably that is a possibility. Um, where else? He could go Suicune first to set up, I suppose, substitute and everything else, because that's what that's what Suicune does. So because I feel like he's gonna start with Dolphin. I don't know, Dolphin. Um, 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 um. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start off with the Vaporeon just because I feel like he's going to be trying to set up the rocks straight away. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to start with the rocks. Uh, best of luck to, um, to Jake here. He's a good battler, so this should be a good battle. Now, unfortunately, the last battle was a very long one and hopefully um, it won't be too long, but we'll just see how we go. So we've got this uh, battle here. Jake is here. Starts off with the Entei, which is fantastic for us because we do have the Vaporeon to start off with. So it was a good prediction for us because looking at his team, he does have two weaknesses to water. Um, he's got uh, two weaknesses to fighting and that start off was just fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead go straight for the skull. There's no reason not to. So he's going to withdraw as he should. He's probably going to go into the Suicune. No, he's going to go into the Porygon 2. Now, um, I'm wondering if we can get this burn off. He's going to trace out. Oh, no. Wow, that was a that was a really good start off. That was a really good start off. Now I'm afraid he's gonna go ahead and go for the um, either the toxic or the thunder wave. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna swap out for the Rodon. Because if he goes for toxic, it's not too bad. But if he goes for thunder wave, it just makes this switch even better. He is gonna go for the toxic, unfortunately, and it does mean we're gonna have a toxic. Uh, Rodon, which is not good at all. So, now we've got Toxic, uh, what I want to do is, uh, I probably want to try and set up a Will-O-Wisp, just to see if I can get some residual damage on the Porygon 2, because uh, Porygon 2 is a very annoying Pokemon, and if you can get a stat on it, I don't see any Pokemon on his team, he does have the Florges, which could have the Aromatherapy, so that's one way he can give it a stat, I guess. So we are going to go for the Will-O-Wisp, we are going to land it, which is good news for us. The fact that he traced the Water Absorbers, uh, was a very smart move on his part. So he's gonna go for the tri-attack, but hopefully this shouldn't do too much because we are especially defensive um, wall here. Now, I feel like, uh, let's see, at this point, I think it would only be good to go for a Volt Switch. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go for the Volt Switch. Now he's still got the Water Absorb on, so bringing out Vaporeon would not be optimal. So we'll go ahead, we'll go for the the Volt Switch. Jeez, that, that's a... Not a lot of damage. So from that, I'm assuming that that is in fact it's uh, the I say special wall. I said that's a special wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in Dewblade because if he goes for a try attack, it's not going to touch Dewblade at all. So we bring back out the Dewblade. Let's see what he goes for. He goes for the Toxic, but it doesn't affect us because we're a Dewblade. So that was actually uh, a terrific, a terrific hit there. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up the... Should I set up Swords Dance? Only because I feel like he's going to bring in the, the Entei. And the Entei is just going to eat up our Dewblade. Hmm. So I could go for a double swap expecting the Entei to come back in. But then I'll just uh, invite the, um, the... The Porygon 2 to come back in and trace the Wardzor. So... 
But he could have Dark Pulse as well, like the other thing. He could have Dark Pulse. Um, I'm just going to go for Sacred Sword. I'll see what I can do with this. He is going to withdraw now. I did want to take a risk because he's probably going to bring in the Entei more than likely, which he does, which is uh, which is obviously a good move. Now, he's obviously scouting to see what I plan to do now. If I went for Sword Dance, it was just too risky because it just brings out the Entei and then it just basically means we have a wasted turn. So, we are going to go ahead and go for the Sacred Sword. It does, not too bad. But, unfortunately now, we're going to have to swap out and... Now, here's where things get tricky. If he goes for Sacred Sword... Oh no, if he goes for uh, Sacred Fire, um, that would be good for us because we're going to be an Entei. But the only problem is, we are going to take a heavy hit to start with. So, um, I'm going to swap into my Entei and hope he goes for a Sacred Fire because if he goes for a Sacred Fire and he's locked into it, we have the opportunity to go by the Extreme Speed to try and kill it, or we can try and scare it out. Uh, the, uh, Guess he's going to swap and go for a second fire. So he is going to go for the second fire, so that was a good prediction for us. Now, unfortunately, uh, wow, that does a lot. Is that a crit? No, that isn't. Wow, okay. So, um, I could go for the Stone Age. I'm just trying to think, is it worth going for the Stone Age? Because if he brings in anything else, it's going to be terrible. Terrible. <sighs> we'll go for Stone Age. Uh, hopefully he stays in. He is going to withdraw. Unfortunately, I should have gone for the second fire. Ah. Oh. Damn it, and now he's gonna get a free turn for. I should have gone with my guts! God damn it, this is so annoying. So now this is gonna do absolutely nothing. He's gonna get a leftovers recovery, I'm assuming. No, okay. Now, I feel like he's gonna set up the rocks here, so. Hmm. Oh, that is so annoying on so many levels. So, I'm gonna go ahead and. I'll bring in the Vaporeon, I guess, the Vaporeon. To scare out the Dolphin and either bring back out the the Porygon 2 or the Suicune. So we bring back out the big Porygon. He goes for the Stealth Rocks. Probably should have swapped in the Mana Buzz. It would have been better just so I can scout for the uh, Stealth Rocks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go for the... I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go for the Wish just because... The Wish, I could try and bring back up Entei back to, to full health. So he does actually bring out the Glalie, so that was actually pretty good on his part. Um, so, we do go for the Wish, and I'm just trying to think what he could possibly do. Moody? Oh, we got this guy now, okay, okay. So we've got a Moody Glalie. I thought Moody was banned. I'm pretty sure Moody is banned, I mean, I'll find out afterwards, but Wow, uh, that sucks for us, so... <sighs> is he going to go for the Protect, though? Be knowing that we're going to go for the the Wish here. So, I'm going to go for Heal Bell, because I feel like he's going to go for Protect. He's going to withdraw, actually, so that's good news for us. And he's going to bring back out Porygon 2. Um, so that's good news for us, because we go for the Heal Bell. He's going to trace the War Absorb. He thinks that we're going to be bait into it, but... No, no, we're not. We're going to go for a heal bell, and we're going to heal off the, the, the poison off the Rotom, which was, a, that's a terrific move for us. So now he's, uh, Porygon 2 is roughly about half, so what I'm assuming he's going to do is, in fact, go for the, the Recover. And what I can do is, I want to try and get rid of these rocks, because these rocks are going to be really annoying to deal with. So, I'm going to go ahead and, I feel like the... I feel like the Entei is coming back in. I just feel like it's going to come back in. So we're going to go ahead and go for the Dewblade. If we can get rid of this Entei, it will be taking a lot of pressure off the Chestnut, just so it can come out and maybe the Dewblade as well. Uh, so we do take Stealth Rock damage. Uh, he is going to go for the Recover, um, just because that's how he does it. Um, now I'm debating whether he's in fact going to go for the swap back into Entei again, or if we feel good to swap. So it's too risky to, go, to not go for the second sword. Because all he has to do is swap in the Entei and he's got all the pressure back off him. So, um, what do do? I'm gonna go for the Sacred Sword. I, I think he's gonna swap back into Entei. He is gonna swap again, and I believe he's gonna bring back out the Entei. Yep, he's going to set up the Entei. It's just too risky to set up while Entei is floating around just because um, it does destroy this, um, it does destroy this, um, this Pokemon here. So. We do go for the Sacred Sword, and that's going to bring it down 
maybe one, well, maybe one more could, should probably do it, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap back out. Now, the only problem is because Rox is up, I don't know if he can survive another Sacred Fire. That's the only issue that I have. So, I'm debating right now whether to go for the swap into Vaporeon and hope. Why well, could just Death Potter off the, the Rodon? But I really don't want to do that because Rodon can be pretty useful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swap into. I'll swap into Vaporeon just because Vaporeon can take a Sacred Sword. Ah, uh, Sacred Sacred Fire. I keep saying Sacred Sword. Uh, hopefully, he's going to have the Sacred Fire more likely because that's what Entei does. So he's going to go for the Sacred Fire. I didn't want to risk bringing the Entei with the Rocks damage. I don't think he would have been able to handle it pretty well. And he does, in fact, get the burn, which is really unfortunate for us. So he's going to get the health back up. Now, now there's the all important question. Now, his Porygon 2 is actually back up to nearly full health. So I'm debating whether to go for a Wish. Which I think that's what I'll do. I'll go for a wish. Because wishes just seems to be, you know, the move to go for. He's gonna actually stay and go for Sacred Fire. This guy's got balls. This guy's got balls. So we do go for a wish. Now, um, we can survive, I believe we can survive another Sacred Fire. If only I could just see how much health I had before. The only problem is that burn damage is gonna bring us down to a point where I believe that that Sacred Fire is actually going to kill us. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to go for a Protect and hope he stays in because if he stays in, it just means this Protect is going to go off really well. Hopefully. Now, he can either bait the switch going to Porygon 2 expecting the Scold. He is going to swap out, unfortunately making our um, Wish go to that. He's actually going to bring in the Forges, which isn't bad at all. Now, I've got a feeling that this Forges is going to be another setting up Mon as well. So we bring ourselves back up to a good amount of health. So we bring ourselves back up top there, which is really good. Um, we are going to get burnt though, so unfortunately, that's going to be a bit of a bummer for us. So now, what I want to do, I'm scouting if he's going to go for set up for Carmine or Moonblast. So I really want to get with these rocks. These rocks are annoying as hell, but there's a forges. I'm going to swap back into Dewblade and I want to see what he tries to do here. If he, he can go for Substitute, I actually didn't think of that. He could go for a Substitute, set up a, a wall here for a Dewblade so he can set up something. Hopefully it's not what he does. He does go for the Moonblast. Now I'm, get, I'm wondering if this is an offensive, uh, offensive floor just. So now we're at a very interesting position here. We can either go for the Gyro Ball. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for Gyro Ball because Gyro Ball does a lot of damage to the floor. But he's going to swap. He's probably going to bring back out the Entei. No, he's going to bring in the Suicune. So that was really good for him to do that. So knowing, of course, that the um, Gyro Ball is going to do absolutely nothing because it is a... I'm guessing it's a fully defensive Suicune. Yeah, that's not going to do anything at all. So what I'm going to do is... I feel like a Skull's coming. I just feel like a Skull is coming. This is tough. I can set up a sword stance. Hope he doesn't burn us with a skull. That's one possibility. Um, is he gonna go for skull though? Is he gonna go for skull? <sighs> Jeez, this is tough. I feel like he's gonna either set up a substitute or he's gonna go ahead and set up a skull. I'm gonna go for the sword stance. Hope he doesn't go for the skull. He is going to double swap, which is really interesting. He's probably going to bring out the Entei now. No, he's going to bring back out the Forges. So he was expecting the double swap into that. But this gives us a chance now to get the Swords Dance set up. So that was actually a really good move for us. The fact that we got that um, the attack stat back up. So now what we can do is, I don't know if we want to go for Gyro Ball again, or we can go for the Shadow Sneak, just anticipating the potential swap. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go for another Sword Stance. There's no reason to go for another Sword Stance. He's too scared to uh, kick that Forges in. So it's just going to give us an opportunity to set up another Sword Stance. So he's going to bring back out the Suicune. And this just gives us another opportunity to set up another Sword Stance. So that's really good news for us. Now that we've got now a plus four attack um, Dewblade here. So he's doing a lot of swapping. And unfortunately, it looks like it's not paying off for him. But now I think we're in a good position. We're going to go ahead and go for the Shadow Sneak. Now, Knowing this, I think he is going to go ahead and go for the Skull to try and get the burn on us. 
So let's see what's a plus four attack. That does a reasonable amount of damage. Unfortunately though, he's gonna go for the skull. Hopefully, this does not burn. It does not burn. That is absolutely fantastic. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go for another Shadow Sneak. And it's gonna bring Suikun down to very low health, which is absolutely fantastic for us. He's gonna go for rest. Oh no, this is the Sleep Talk set. This is a Sleep Talking uh, Suikun. Oh no, this is terrible. Does he have the Chester Berry? He's got the Chester Berry. Okay, so that's really unfortunate for us. Now, what we can do is, because I, I don't want to get rid of this Dewblade because it's a plus four, but it's too risky not to, so I'm going to go ahead and swap back into the Vaporeon expecting the Scald because it's too risky to go ahead and try and set up the um, everything. So we get the, he gets the Scald off, but we're going to get back health, which is uh, good news for us. So that was actually a good turn for us at the very least. The only problem is now, unfortunately, all the setting up we had to do blade is now gone, unfortunately. But unfortunately, that had to be done because Skull was just too risky and the fact that it had the Chester Berry just made it just very annoying. Now, the only question is, is he going to set up on me? Because I feel like this Suicune can do a set up on me. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and swap into the... What's a good swap in? We've well, got the chest very knocked off, so oh, that was so bad for us. That was really bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap into Mandelbuzz because I really need to get rid of these rocks. He's actually gonna swap out. He outspeeds the Vaporeon, so that's actually really interesting. So he brings in the Porygon 2, tracing our water absorb, and we're gonna double out and we're gonna actually go into our Mandelbuzz. Now Mandelbuzz is a special wall as well. So this matchup has been really, really intense just from the start because all that pressure the Stealth Rock is creating for Entei and Rotom to come back in is phenomenal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go for the default just because we need to get rid of these rocks. Now as soon as he hits us with the move, he's actually going to get bounced out. Now more likely he's going to go for the Toxic to try and land it on the Mana Buzz and do some damage. We outspeed, we go for the default and we get rid of those rocks which is phenomenal for us. That is really phenomenal. He's going to go for the Charge Beam. Now, this is a very interesting move here because now the red card is going to trigger. He's going to get the Special Attack Boost, but this red card is going to bounce that Porygon 2 back out. And the question is, what's it going to bring out? He's going to bring out the Forges. So, I guess that wasn't too bad, but at the same time, it's just the Moonblast is going to do a lot of damage to us. So, I'm going to swap out. I'm going to bring out the Entei to take it out well, to take this Moonblast, I'm assuming that's coming for us. So we bring back out the Entei. Now, the swords are gone. It's pretty much optimal to bring it in. Now, if you go for Moonblast, we're resisted, but hopefully we can live it here. Hopefully it doesn't crit us. That's the main thing, because if he crits us, um, no, we eat it up. We yummy, yummy, we eat it up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead now. I could go for the Iron Head, or I could go for the Sacred Fire, but more likely, Sacred Fire just seems to be the best move. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the Sacred Fire. He's going to protect scouting what we're going to do, so he can make his choice accordingly, which is a very good move on his part there. So now we know that the uh, floor just does pack the Protect. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go for another Sacred Fire. There's no point in staying in. More likely, he's going to bring back out the Entei to eat up, or the Suicune, to eat up this Sacred Fire. Now. Doing that also allows it to potentially get hit by the... But also the problem is that pressure. So we go for the Sacred Fire. Now let's see how much damage it does to this Suicune. It does about 15% and unfortunately we don't get a burn on that. But now it's too risky to keep in the, um, the Entei. We're going to go ahead and swap out to bring in the... Um, Bring the Vaporeon, expecting the Skull, because I'm assuming that's his only offensive move. Because if I know he's set up, Sleep Talk set up, it's Rest, Sleep Talk, re, uh, Rest, Sleep Talk, Skull, and Calm Mind. And that's the final move. So he is going to set up on us, which is really, 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 really bad for us. It's not good at all. So unfortunately, unfortunately, we need to come up with a plan to get rid of this Forgit. Um, because now we've got rid of, we've lost the red card, so the red card is now going to. God, this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. Because now we can get just walled out. I'm going to go for the. I'm going to go for the heal bell to get rid of this burn off 
Yeah. He's actually gonna swap. He's probably gonna bring back in the Porygon too. He's gonna bring out the Forges. So I'm trying to figure what he was trying to do with that. Trying to scare me out into double swap into um, Entei maybe because it's you know physical. Um, so we stay and we give it a burn, which is good news for us. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead. I want to set up a wish because. We need to get Dewblade back up to uh, a good amount of health so that basically if we try to go for... Um, and that does a lot and he gets the special attack drop which is rather unfortunate but we do get the wish off. Now, I really want this Dewblade to put in the work against this team here because it just... It kills his Forges and if we can set up enough it actually hurts the Porygon too as well so... I'm debating whether to swap out into the Entei to bring out to full health or the Dewblade. I think Entei would probably be the better Pokemon to bring back up to speed. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go for the... Um, we'll go for Entei. We'll go for Entei, bring Entei back up to full health. So even if he goes for Moonblast, the only thing that could be bad here is if in fact if he goes for the crit on the Moonblast, which hopefully, like I said, that's not what he does. But the fact that those rocks are gone is absolutely phenomenal. So he does go for another Moonblast. The only problem as well is the... the... the Suicune. So we are going to go back up to almost full health, which is absolutely fantastic. Now I've got a feeling that he's going to double swap and bring in the... Um, the Suicune, because the other thing he's trying to do as well is he's trying to use pressure to get rid of all the Sacred Fire PP, which is another smart move on his part. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to double swap out and I'm going to bring in the... Uh, I'll bring in Chestnut. I think Chestnut would be a good play here. We don't have the grass type move, but the only problem is if he stays in, goes for the Moonblast. That's the only problem we have, is if he stays in, goes for the Moonblast. He goes to Protect, so that was actually good. The only problem is now he's at... Um, he's in a position where he can try and go for that Spike... The, uh, yeah, the Moonblast. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and go for the Spiky Shield. Uh, predicting he's going to go for a Moonblast. So he is in fact going to go for Moonblast, which is uh, not good for us. So the Moonblast gets caught, we protect it, it's all good. So now we're going to go ahead and I think we're going to have to swap out into... Vaporeon can't take two Moonblast. We have to bring into a position, if you try to bring back in the Suicune, the Vaporeon would be best because if you try to set up, we can try to get a Wish off and heal off the rest of our team. Now, I'm just trying to think, he's probably going to swap out here because there's no point if he's expecting the Entei swap. He actually goes for another Moonblast, so I guess it's good that we... He does get the crit, I believe that was a crit. No, it wasn't. Okay. So... That damn... That damn thing. That damn, damn, damn thing. I'm going to go for Iron Head, hoping he's going to stay in the expecting me to swap back into... He's going to go for Protect, because that's what... Oh, okay. Okay, so... Now the question is, is in fact, is he going to stay in? Because if he stays in, expect him to swap back into Chestnut, it works for us. But I doubt it. I, doubt, I think he's going to swap out. Um, he's going to withdraw. He's probably going to bring in the Donphan now to probably try to set up rocks again, now that we're doing that. Yeah, that's right. He does do that. So, that's really unfortunate for us because now I'm guessing this Iron Head's going to do absolutely nothing to this thing because it's fully defensive. Well, actually, it doesn't do too bad, but he has the Rocky Helmet. Ah, that's really interesting information. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to go swap, we're going to bring back in the Man of Us, expecting the Stealth Rocks to come back, because I don't want the Stealth Rocks back. But Jake is a really good battle, as you can see, this is really intense. It's probably been about over 20 minutes now, and no Pokemon has gone yet, because it's just a prediction game here. So he's going to set up another Stealth Rocks. Now, what I'm going to do is, I've got a feeling he's going to go for a, um, a Rock-type move. So... I'm going to go ahead and go for Roost, expecting the... Uh, oh no. No, he's going to bring back in Forges. No, that's terrible. No, he's going to bring in Entei, actually. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, now, because we're Roosting, now this is where things get just a little bit dicey. If we can... We got back to full health, which is good. Now, the question is, not only more likely that Forges is, in fact, a setup for Wish. <sighs> I'm going to go for Foul Play. Hopefully this will kill the Entei. I'm making a risky. This should live. It does. We don't get the burn. We go for the foul play. Can it kill? It does. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so we get the first kill. It's his Entei. Oh my gosh, that was... Oh. 
Okay, so one potential threat is now gone from his team, which is absolutely phenomenal. That, that thing is gone. Now, the only problem is now he's got a Glalie here, and more than likely he's gonna go for the Ice Shard to kill us. The problem is, what do we swap into to take this? We could go back into uh, Vaporeon, but Vaporeon really can't take much of a hit. And Chestnut is obviously weak to us. So, oh, this is bad, this is bad. We've got rocks, I hate rocks. Rocks is terrible. It's gonna put too much pressure on my Entei, so. God, this is terrible. He's gonna go for Ice Shard. More likely he's gonna go for Ice Shard. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't go for Ice Shard. We're gonna go for Default. Hopefully, Scouting to Protect, because I just need to get rid of these rocks. These rocks are putting too much pressure on my Entei and my, my Rodon. So, we stay in, he does go for the return, and that's more likely going to kill us. That is, in fact, going to kill us, because now it is Ice-type, and Mendabuzz cannot take an Ice-type to the face. No. So now we've got rocks up this entire game, and that's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Because now it just puts more pressure on a wish from Vaporeon to take on the Glalie. I have an interesting, I have an interesting situation here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Chestnut. This is going to be a little bit interesting. So I know that now, depending on if it's Jolly or if it's Adamant, might make this choice interesting. So. First off, I'm going to go for Spiky Shield and scout what he's going to do. Because I've got a feeling he's actually going to withdraw the Glalie, which is really interesting. Bring back out the Florges. I probably should have gone for Leech Seed, but, you know, it doesn't matter at this point. So, we're going to go for a Spiky Shield. It fails. But now, this Florges is good to go for Moonblast because we've got all these damaged Pokemon. <sighs> this is terrible. Absolutely terrible. I'm going to bring in Rotom Heat because I believe with uh, Rotom Heat and the Stealth Rock damage we should be able to live, hopefully. Unfortunately, we don't have much choice because the Stealth Rock is here, unfortunately. But we do pop the Citrus Berry, which is good for us, um, so we can take this hit. Now, he goes for Aromatherapy. What's he giving him? Oh, he's giving him the burn on the, the Porygon too. Well, that actually worked out very well for us then, because now what I feel like I can do is, I'm expecting a swap. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the Will-O-Wisp. Um, he's going for the swap. He's going to bring back in the Glalie, or the, the Suicune. He brings up Porygon too. So, he's got Levitate now. But we do we are going to Will-O-Wisp this Porygon too, which is fantastic because it just basically makes his last move pointless. So we just got the free switch in for the... the, uh, the can't talk. The Rotom Heat, so... What are you going to do here? What are you going to do here? Oh, these rocks are going to be so much of a problem for us. I feel like he's going to go ahead and go for the... Either the Tri-Attack or the Toxic. Tri-Attack or Toxic. So I'm going to swap, bring back in the... The Dew Blade to pretty much take in whatever he's going to do. The only thing he could do here is if he has Thunder Wave, I guess, with Toxic, which would be really out there, you know? So, we do take some Stealth Rock damage, which is unfortunate. He goes for the Charge Beam, which isn't actually too bad. Now, wow, that does a lot of damage. Oh no, this is terrible, this is terrible, this is terrible, this is terrible. Now that he's got the Charge Beam going off, and no, more likely he's going to outspeed us, this is terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, we're bringing the Chestnut, because if he's going to keep going for Charge Beam, then Chestnut can eat it up. That was really bad for us. That was really bad for us. And double swapping is terrible because now if he goes for recover, it just means he got a free turn. He goes for another charge beam, hoping he's gonna, we're gonna stay in and let the Dew Blade die, but that's not gonna be the case. So, not very effective. He gets the special attack boost once again. Now, we are in position to go for the Drain Punch. I really wanna land this Drain Punch, but I got a feeling he's gonna swap out once again. So, I'm gonna go for the Leech Seed, making a prediction that he is in fact gonna swap. He is gonna swap. And that's good news for us because now we're going to get this lead set on whatever comes in. And that's going to be the Forges. So, that was a really good move for us. Uh, we go for the lead seed. And this lead seed is going to put all the pressure on this Forges to stay in, which is good news for us. So, we get the lead seed off. It's going to take a bit of health off. Now, more likely, it's going to be its Wish user, Aromatherapy user. And more likely, he's going to go ahead and try to get rid of the burn that's on this 
based off what he's done last time. I feel like he's going to try and stay, to get rid of the burn off that uh, that Porygon too. So we're going to make a risky play. We're going to swap into Entei, hoping he's going to go for the aromatherapy again. That's what we're hoping. Because if it does, it means Entei just got a free switch in, even though we're taking some damage. Um, yeah, that rock's going to be a problem. Is he going to go for the aromatherapy though? That's the question. No, nope, he's going to go for the Moonblast, and unfortunately, that is going to be the end of my Entei, which is really, really unfortunate. <sighs> that was terrible. So, unfortunately, because of that, <sighs> we're, we're facing a, a big, a big problem over here. A really big problem. So, we're going to swap in the Vaporeon. This is not good at all. This is not good at all. All the, these rocks, that's what it is. It's the stealth rocks. That's how important stealth rocks is in this game. Setting up in this game is absolutely optimal. And the fact that you go to my mana buzz first just made the rocks just make all the plays count. <sighs> Far out, this is terrible. More likely, I feel like I'm gonna lose this game. Like I said, Jake is a phenomenal gamer, um, a phenomenal battler. Um, I'm just gonna scout for protect just because I don't like a Moonblast from a floor jet. I don't like a Moonblast from a floor jet. He's going to withdraw, unfortunately, so we're going to waste a turn of protecting, and he's going to bring out the Glalie. Ah, oh, this is terrible, this is terrible. We should have gone for the Wish. Why didn't we go for the Wish? I will never know, I will never know, I will never know. Now, now that this Glalie is here, and that's a problem, we're going to go for another Protect. See, what the hell is he going to do? We go for the Protect. Now, what's he going to do here? Oh, this actually has my interest. He goes for Spikes. He goes to Spice. Well, that's just terrible. But I feel like I should go for a wish now, just because I have to. What is this Glalie? Wow! What the fuck? So I have Spikes Taunt Return. Blast move, I'm guessing Explosion? Wow, that was shit. Oh, this is pro plays right here, pro plays. So now he's a swap, now he's done the damage. Because now that spikes is gonna kill this um, kill this Dewblade when it comes back in, which is unfortunate. And he's gonna And I'm getting totally played right now. I am getting played like a fiddle. Oh my gosh, so Getting that spikes up. Wow, that was far. Uh, and now I have to swap because I've got nothing else. So, we are admitting we're going to lose this one. Jake's a good battle up fire. Those plays just, wow. Spikes on a mega. Like, holy shit. Like, I was not expecting that at all. But we're going to let this, uh, actually, no, that was terrible. Now, if he goes to recover, he's got a free time. So this is what I'm talking about. I don't know this format well enough to make these plays. Even though I've got the first kill, he's now coming back from this. So, not good at all. Not good at all. It's gonna go, actually we live, but I think Spike's gonna kill us. Yeah, Spike's gonna kill us. So we do lose the Dewblade, and he goes for the, the Recover. He's actually gonna double swap, actually. He knew we were gonna swap. He brings back out the Glalie. The good news is though, what can I do? I know Rodon can take a return from a glare. I'm pretty sure I can. Even though we're going to take some damage. Okay, now the question is can I lift that? I'm going to go for a pain split. Either expecting him to stay in, he's going to go for another spikes. So he's just setting up all the hazards now. We're going to go for the, the pain split. So we're going to bring ourselves back up to a good amount of health, which is good for us. Now, the question is, is he going to stay in or... We'll go for the Will Wisp. I feel like he's gonna, I feel like I'm gonna land a burn on this. I feel like he's gonna try and kill us with something. So we've seen Return, Taunt, and Spikes. The last move is, what is the... What's the last move? This isn't good, guys. This is not good at all. Unfortunately, I feel like we are gonna lose this one. So he's gonna go for the swap and he's gonna bring in the sweep, the Dolphin, actually. 
So that was good for the fact that we went for the overheat, which is good. But we, now we missed the wheel whisk. Okay, great news for everyone. Great news. So we're going to try and go for another wheel whisk. Hopefully we can land it, but I think I should have gone for the overheat now because now I've got a feeling he's going to swap back out to Polygon Two, knowing that is exactly what we're going to do. Which is what he's going to do. He's going to swap back out to Polygon Two, and no, he's going to be in the forges. Okay, that's interesting. That's really interesting. So we're going to get a will o wisp off and then we're going to land it on this forges. So I guess that's good news for us, that we've got something on it. <sighs> but just, ah, oh, this, this battle is just going downhill. So I'm, I'm really sorry guys, I don't mean to sound very negative or anything, but like I said, I don't play UU often, I, I usually play OU. So this is just a new experience for me. Now the question is, is he in fact going to go for aromatherapy or a, a Moonblast? Always going to go for Protect. I'm going to go for a Pain Split. I hope he's going to Protect. I know he has a lot of HP. We are going to get the Pain Split off and we're going to get back a little bit more health, which is good news for us. It's a bit of damage. He is going to go for the Aromatherapy. So it's going to heal not just the Burn Off him, uh, her, but the Burn Off the Porygon 2 as well. So Burn and Burn gone. So he's going to bring himself back up now. Now I want to set up another Will Wisp just because if I can waste his um, Aromatherapies, and I know that it only has like eight, I believe. That would be good for us. So we're going to get another little wisp off, and more likely he's going to pack the um, the wish. So that's his final move. So move blast, uh, wish, protect, and aromatherapy. So that's that's the general set for a forges in uh, UU. So I do like the fact that we did we were able to get that burn on it just as it did that. So we're going to go for an overheat now. He's more likely going to go for Protect. He's going to withdraw. Now this is interesting. What's he going to bring into? Probably the Polygon 2. Yeah, that's right. The Polygon 2. So we're going to go for an Overheat and hopefully, hopefully, we can get the kill on this Polygon 2. And I doubt we can because I'm guessing this is a special defensive wall. We do go for the Overheat. Will it kill though? No, it won't. No, it won't. No, it won't. Uh, okay, so because of that, I think we just go for another Will Wisp. Get a burn on this Porygon, get residual damage on it. And just take just just to make it wear it down a bit. He's gonna go for the toxic, so that's bad for us. Um, okay, so we got poisoned by that <clears throat> the toxic by the Porygon too, so that's not really good for us at all. So weighing in my options here, just trying to think what I should go for. Um, I think Volt Switch would probably be the best and just try to bring in the the Chestnut really I think would be the best choice because if he stays in and tries to go for a tri attack or anything, he's either gonna go for the swap and he's gonna bring in the Glalie. Glalie! Reminds me of my playthrough from Fire Red. If you haven't checked that out, uh, go ahead and check that out on the playlist. So we're gonna go for the Volt Switch, it's gonna do a little bit of damage to the Glalie and we're gonna go ahead and swap. Now, um, like I said, Chestnut at this point would probably be the best choice. I'm pretty sure it can take a return from a Glalie. So we're gonna bring in the, the Chestnut here. It's gonna take a little bit of damage from rocks, a little bit of damage from spikes. Hopefully that's not the defining, the, the deciding factor for this. So um, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go for Drain Punch. Hopefully this return doesn't kill us because I know he's gonna outspeed us. We probably should have gone for a spiky shield just to get some damage off it. Man. Oh. We can't. I'm guessing those spikes would have had something to do with it, but we lose it. And then we've got Vaporeon. We're bringing Vaporeon to go for the skull because um, <clears throat> we've got a feeling what he's going to try and do is uh, go for the taunt, try and taunt us, but we just have to go for the skull and kill it. I know we've lost this one, but I don't want us to go off on the bad note. We'll go for the protect first to get some uh, some my point, some leftovers recovery. Return fails, but that's fine because we're Vaporeon. And I think a Skull would be fitting for here. So we're going to go ahead, click in Skull, and that should be it for this Glalie here. Hopefully it's enough to kill it. Hopefully. But we'll see what happens. Uh, he's going to go for the Taunt. So like I thought, um, expecting us to go for a Wish of some sorts. We go for the Skull. That's going to be, yes, it's going to be enough to take out the Glalie. So 
it's not as bad as it looks. Like at this point, this is how it's gonna look. It's gonna be, <sighs> yeah, it's not, it's not good. It's not good at all. I'm not salty or anything. He played really well. Like I can't be angry at someone who plays really well. So now, uh, more likely he can swap in the, okay, he's gonna go for Flodgers. I would've thought he was gonna swap in the Porygon 2 to pretty much lock my Vaporeon because it traces Warp Absorb and I've got Wish Protect and uh, Heal Bell and because I'm taunting Skull to my only move. So, um, we're going to go ahead and go for the swap. We're going to bring in the Rotom Heat because I do feel like um, <clears throat> we should leave a, uh, a Moonblast because even though we've taken some damage from the rocks, uh, he's actually going to go for the Aromatherapy so he's going to get rid of the burn off the uh, Porygon 2 and the Forges as well. So that was a good move on his part to do that. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we'll go for the paint split because I know Floor just has a lot of HP. So we'll go ahead and click in the, um, the paint split and hopefully we can land it. If he swaps anything else, paint split, he's actually going to have to protect. So I don't know if paint split can work in protect, does it? Because it doesn't, okay, it doesn't work. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's not looking good for us at all because I think at this point, he can just protect, stall us, and let the poison do the damage. So it's unfortunate that we got taunted, but uh, I think it was the best move he could have done because, I mean, at this point, he's in no position to lose anything. We're going to go ahead and go for the overheat and try and do some damage to this thing. Um, so he's actually going to withdraw the Forges. Uh, Suicune? No, Porygon 2. He wants his Porygon 2 to take it out. So <laughs> it's just. Uh, it's going to trace our Levitate, which at this point is irrelevant. Go for the pain split now. I think because Porygon 2 has lower HP, I think that's what he was doing, just expecting the read for that. So at this point, I think we might as well go for the overheat to try and uh, kill this thing. I probably could have gone for a um, a, a, a will o' wisp, but uh, at this point, I'm just trying to kill it. Hopefully, we can land a crit. If we can land a crit, we might be able to take this Porygon 2 out. So okay, here we go. Overheat. Can you kill? lands and and it's not enough to take it out so he's gonna get recover because that's what you use all about he's gonna recover so at this point yeah we've accepted that we've lost I, I, I know I've probably said more than once but yeah um, I, I appreciate those who do support me but um, you have to admit when a good thing is done and at this point um, our winning this good thing is not going to happen today but there's always the next Wi-Fi battles and that's what Wi-Fi battles are all about win or lose it's a learning experience you get to learn about different moves that can be used against you you can learn about different strategies that can be used against you and you just get better at predicting so I mean it's just you, you I think it's just a big prediction game but in, in general battling itself is a prediction game so I mean you can't really be angry at that now um, at this point there's no point swapping in with Vaporeon, so we're gonna go for another overheat, and uh, I doubt it's gonna kill, because um, we are special attack reduced, and it doesn't. And that's unfortunate. He's gonna go for recover, just to rub salt in the wounds, and we're like, yeah, I got you now, I got you now, so I was like, yeah. Now, nah, it's a good game though, so unfortunately, this will be our second loss on the channel, but like I said, it, it's not a big deal. I'm not, I, I do get salty sometimes, but if I lose to stupid shit like, you know, crits, and all that, maybe. I mean, every person does it. I mean, it's not unheard of for someone to get salty when they lose. Uh, but yeah, so at this point, yeah, we're not going anywhere. I think we'll just admit, we're not going to go for a protect. We'll just go ahead, go for the skull, try and get some damage off it, do whatever, because at this point, there's no point in trying to protect stall. Um, you know, we just go out like a hero, go for the attack, you know, and we land a crit. <laughs> when it's irrelevant, we land a crit on the final attack, but it's not going to matter, just try attack. He's going to take us out, and that is going to be the end of that. So, um, a good game to you there, Jake. So, um, unfortunately, we lose 0 4 for this one here. So, um, thanks a lot, Jake, for the battle. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys are enjoying these Wi Fi battles and are looking for more content from this channel, go ahead, leave a like down below, and subscribe for more content because, as always, as I say in every video, your support is always appreciated. So, have a great day, have a great night. Whoever's watching this, wherever you're watching this, this is CJS064 over and out. And as always, I'll see you next time.